quiet. We like that. Mm-hmm. Almost too quiet. You might get to watch some of that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the October 16, 2007 Board of Selectmen Sewer Commissioners meeting. Will the clerk please call the roll? Madam Chair, all five selectmen are present, as is the town administrator, John McAuliffe. Okay, before we start this evening, is there anyone that would like to address the board under citizens' participation? You want to come on up, Jim? <clears throat> You can lift it up, I think. It's, uh, oh, I, it's there. I didn't know there was one there. <laughs> I know, it didn't look like there was. Right? Okay. What I come up for is just make the announcement that there will be a Veterans Day parade this year. It will be on November 12th and not the 11th because Sunday is the 11th, and we figure a lot of people like to go to church, and we want to, and rather than we interfere with the church services, we are going to the 12th, and it will be celebrated by the whole state, I guess, the country, I guess, too. But we will be forming up at 10.30 at Bessie Park and stepping off at 11 o'clock. We will proceed down Main Street to Chapel Hill. We'll turn left on Chapel Hill, come up here to the Town Hall Green, and we will have a collation in the, the cafeteria in the Town Hall. And we have one volunteer for our main speaker this year. It's our new town administrator. He volunteered without utilizing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored you asked me. Thank you, Jim. And the Board of Selectmen are invited to my prayer with us, too. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be there. I'll see you all there. And I want to announce, too, that we have, I now have a program on TV. I don't know if any of you have seen it yet. It's called Veterans of Veterans Affairs, of Veterans Issues. Yes. On Friday evening at approximately 6.30, we've taped two shows so far. I'm co-hosting it with Dennis Allen, who's the uh, director of the Homeless Vets in New Bedford. And we, uh, we're we having different guests come up. In this last show we did, we had Sid Chase and Norman Gill, who were the Veterans Affairs Officers in, on the Cape. They are the Veterans Affairs Officers for the... 15 towns here on the Cape. They run the district, as it's called. Because we used to at one time have a full-time veterans agent here in town. And by law, it's required that we should have it because of the uh, how many people we get living in town year-round visit residents. But being, if you have a district, you can join a district, and we have called it in the district. The only two towns on the Cape that aren't on the district is P-Town and uh, Falmouth. They have a full-time veterans agent. The rest of them all got part-timers like we have. They're here. Our veterans agent here is here in town on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons from 12.30 to 4. Now, if you can't get him here, you can get him. He's in Buzzards Bay on... Tuesday and Thursday mornings, from 9 to 12, I guess it is. But they have an 800 number posted outside the office down there on the fourth level, and they will answer all calls. Like I say, that next segment on the uh, veterans' issues that comes up will be, I have Norman Chase, and Norman Gill and Sid Chase, and we have a young lady from, I have a young lady from the... Uh, Career Center in New Bedford. They've got a program coming on November 14th, and she spoke about that for about 10, 15 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes on that. Okay. So if anybody's interested, you can just look at the, Steve puts it on at 6.30 on the new show that we just taped, that one will be on this weekend. It's on Fridays about approximately 6.30, am I right, Steve? Yep. <laughs> I got I the, uh, well, thank you very much. And the other thing I want to say, we are going to, I am going to also put the veterans issue is going to go on uh, the website too. And if anyone has any questions, they answers they want, they give me a call at the, 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 my office down to the disability and the veterans council offices. Area code 508-291-3100, extension 6513. And if I can't answer the question right away, 
I will get back to you. I will find an answer for them. That's all I can tell you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. And as a matter of fact, I think we are doing the uh, permit for the roads for the Veterans Day Parade later on this evening. So thank you very much. Um, okay, I think we'll pass through the um, announcements and save those till after. Um, the consent agenda. Uh, I don't believe we have any bills this evening, right? None that I see. Okay. The, um, <laughs> the next item on the agenda is the um, interview for Library Board of Trustees. Is uh, Dorothy Heath here, please? And first of all, I want to thank you for coming in and, and your indulgence on the miscommunications a couple of times with trying to uh, get you on the agenda, but I'm, I'm very grateful that you're here. And um, I think maybe we should start off with you. Just want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your background as far as library and that type of stuff. Okay. Um, I have been a uh, resident of Wareham since 2000. And previous to that, I lived in uh, Brockton for about 23 years. Um, I've been in, interested in libraries and involved in libraries ever since I learned to read. Um, I, you know, volunteered in school and stuff like that. And I was on the Board of Library Trustees of the Brockton Public Library from 1993 till 2000 when I became a resident of Wareham. At that time, I resigned um, there. During my stay at the Brockton Public Library, um, we got a grant from the state and um, we well, we wrote a, we got a partial grant from the state library, and we raised uh, enough money so we had a third, a third, and a third. By the time I left, they broke ground shortly after I left for an addition to. If you've been to Brockton, there's a huge new addition on. At that time, all we had was a Carnegie Library that hadn't been touched since Carnegie donated the money to it, and um, two branch libraries. And there's a huge. We took over the building in the back. Um, they renovated, and we had raised all the money, and like I said, and got a grant, and now there's a lovely new addition that's probably bigger than the original library was um, in the Brockton Public Library. And I've been talking to somebody recently, and they've just renovated the East Side Library, too. So now I guess the only one left is the West one to do. Um, and it, you know, so I have been through the process, a lot of the processes. I can't say that I know all there is to know, but I do know enough to ask questions. <laughs> That's my... Which is important, yeah. If I don't know, I ask. And if not, I try and find the answers to how things are done because it, it can be really, really confusing um, knowing where you stand on a lot of different things. So I know that um, I just feel like, you know, I was in Wareham. I kept seeing that there were um, uh, openings on the library trustees. And since I served before, I volunteered to serve again. Well, I was down a personal note. I, I'm originally from Brockton, and um, I, I used to go to St. Patrick's School, which was right up the street from the Main Street Library, so we used to go there all the time. And uh, I hadn't been there in 20 years, and I just went back for an art show last year. And it really is, I mean, kudos to all these, because the, the renovations of that place, it just, it was, I, I was floored when I walked into it of how beautiful the, the, main, you know, the main library is. It really... It turned out very Gorgeous. well. It, we, I mean, the sky, the the skylights and everything, and the openness. It was beautiful. We were very. I mean, we put a lot of work into it, but all in all, we had a lot of luck too. We found the right architect who understood that we wanted to preserve things that were in the old building yeah. and renovate them, as well as you know, we wanted the new area, but we wanted to hold on to the old as the well. Character. And he was very good with us. And we also had. One of the things that happened at the time that the town of the town, yeah, the city went along with us, is that the one thing that they said from the very beginning is it had to be designed in such a way where we could not require any new employees, and to expand the library as much as we did, the design had to be perfect, not mm. to require new employees. But it was, to, and we made it. It was never handicap accessible. We put it in an elevator and everything else. I mean, the first thing we did is. We trotted all over the state of Massachusetts looking at libraries that had renovations.